And Florida isn't the only pension fund to come under fire lately. Lehman Brothers is announcing its earnings this morning in just about an hour and will host a conference call to offer more details on its projected 2.8 billion dollar loss. New Jersey's decision to invest 180 million dollars of their pension fund money into troubled Lehman Brothers raised more than a few eyebrows. Lehman shares have lost 42 percent of their value since the beginning of the year, giving state employees concern or employers concern about their pensions. John Burry is an enrolled actuary in New Jersey and he's following New Jersey's pension plan woes very carefully. And Robert Powell is market watch is retirement columnist. Good morning, gentlemen. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for focusing on the issue. All right, so uh, John, uh, let's get started with you. You know, in addition to what's going on with this Lehman Brothers story, very specifically, uh, New Jersey's sunk a lot of money into not only Lehman Brothers, they've put a lot of money into Citigroup and Merrill Lynch, what one would argue have been sort of the riskiest of the financial institutions. What's going on, and why might this suggest, if you're someone who's investing money in this pension fund, that these are very, very risky and dangerous investments? Well, New Jersey assumes eight and a quarter percent as their goal. They want to make that. They have a very mature population. There's um, six billion dollars that has to be paid out every year to retirees, almost a quarter of a million. But they have to put money in to be able to uh, to if basically they, make up that if return. they don't make it on returns they have to make it on contributions and New Jersey politicians basically are cowards uh, they don't want to go to the taxpayers and say you have to make it up uh, they left off making contributions in 1997 in 2001 they raised the benefits in the formula that led to a huge underfunding now they're stuck with eight and a quarter percent they've got this plan which which huge liabilities that have to be paid out they have to make it in earnings. That's their only fail-safe. Okay, so Robert, let, let's let's break this down. In essence, what what John is talking about, an eight and a quarter percent return, uh, many would argue, somewhat unrealistic given the current environment. Are pension funds set up in a situation right now because they can't fund them in terms of the public efforts right now as much as they need to? Are they set up to fail? And may we be looking at pension funds that five years from now? are no longer in, in existence, particularly when the baby boomer generation taps in. They, they certainly are set up to fail in the sense, as, as, you just met, as John just mentioned, they're significantly underfunded, so they need to make it up either in terms of performance and contributions or both. And the big problem that these pensions face at the moment is that they need to balance the need to, be, to drive performance against the need to be prudent. And I think in the case of New Jersey, though perhaps more aggressive than other state pension plans, um, you're, you're looking at a state where the governor is financially astute and is driving an investment policy that might, some might consider prudent in the sense that he's taking a small bet. He has said that what he's doing is increasing his exposure to financials where he's been underexposed um, heretofore. And I think if you look at it in the scheme of things, it's a very tiny investment relative to an $80 billion pension. If he's right, he boosts performance marginally. If he's wrong, he doesn't hurt the pension dramatically. But 8% is a big, big number to get. And if you look at the standard deviation associated with an 8% expected return, it could be up plus 20% in any given year and perhaps down 3% in any given year. You know, John, you uh, have been studying these pension funds, particularly what's been going on in New Jersey. And when you, when you look at this, in essence, what alternative or option do employees have? I mean, at the end of the day, is their money being invested and they really have no say in the future of that money? Well, in theory, employees shouldn't have any options. It's a defined benefit plan. That's, they were set up so that employees could do their work, not worry about it, the money's going to be there. They shouldn't have to worry. It's the overseers, the trustees, who, ha who have to worry and have the burden, and they have two options. They can either fund a plan properly, which pretty much isn't an option. It's going to take seven, eight billion dollars a year if they were to stop playing the phony numbers. Or they could reduce benefits, and that's suicidal for a politician. They could have some combination of the two, but what New Jersey is doing now is just absolutely silly. The, the new proposal is affecting new hires and will save three hundred million dollars in the next fifteen years. And it's, since it's new hires, it probably will be in the fifteenth year. I mean, New Jersey may lose that by ten o'clock today. I, there is no spine within the trustees or within the, go the governor, even the governor's office. I, I spoke to him directly at a town hall meeting and told him, 
politicians cannot be trusted with defined benefit plans. There is no rule. There is no ERISA, for, as there is in the private sector, for these plans. They're on their own. Politicians make the rules. Accountants try a little, but they don't have to be listened to. All right, Robert, uh, this isn't a situation that's just going on in New Jersey. I mean, there are plenty of other situations like this. Uh, you know, we've seen an investment with CalPERS. They made a big investment recently uh, that lost them about, you know, half percent of their portfolio. So it's not just a one-time deal. Plus, let's not forget investments like Bear Stearns. So what's the solution to the problem, and what can we, the taxpayer, do about it? Well, there's two things. One is, as John mentioned, there's not much that the individual um, employee can do in this case because you, you're very far removed from the people who are making decisions about the investments. What you need to do then is protect the risk in terms of if they reduce my benefits, I need to make sure that I have saved enough money outside of my pension plan to cover whatever retirement income uh, needs I will have later down the road. So if that means contributing more to a taxable account or if you have access to a defined contribution at your place of employment, uh, you certainly need to look at that because there's not really not much you can do as an employee of the state or a local government to increase uh, and protect your pension. All right. Well, we're going to have to continue to tackle this issue because I know you're fired up about it and a lot of people are angry about it. It's an important point. John and Robert, we have to leave it there, though. Thank you so much for joining me.